Good day to you. Hopefully you you're having a fantastic day so far. Look, look, my man, how's it going? Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm really, um, yeah, I'm following your Bitcoin stories. It's it's really amazing to to watch. Uh, you know when you when you do your stuff there. And I'm um, also hoping everybody else is having a fantastic week so far. What's happening in Brisbane? Tell me what's happening in Brisbane. Uh, Luke Corin says, um, afternoon brother from another mother. Thank you so much. And Albert Dutton, get in. Uh, get amongst it or else you get lost behind. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, property inspections. Wow. We'll have to talk about that. That's fantastic, really. Oh. Right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Obviously, you know what the drill is. My name is Prosper, and every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, we just sit around here and talk about epic stuff that's happening in and around, um, you know, to see if we can end up having businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. And um, I also believe that, you know, as online people, um, you know, we should be able to create for and relate to uh, those that will be demanding money off of. And I also uh, believe that every single human being should use deodorant. It's just better for the rest of us, okay? And every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, we will be sitting around and talking about um, you know, the online prosperity blueprint, how you can capture the right kind of leads, engage those people, convert them into paying customers, and then connect with them on a level that they will be buying from you uh, eternally. Because we all know this. People buy from those that they know, like, and trust. So what is it that you're doing within your business to get people to know you, to get people to trust you, and to get people to purchase from you so we will be helping you generate those leads and also a bit of revenue so that you can basically work around your business and um, you know generate uh, first of all PR and also brand yourself there if you're watching this for the first time let me know where you are tuning in from it just helps us with the statistics just to see how far um, you know this uh, message is going but as far as we're all concerned guess what um, as of August 2017, there were over 2 billion people that were checking in to either Facebook or any other social media, all right? Um, do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you would notice that that's a, a massive amount of traffic that's a lot of people, but not every one of them can be your customer. Not every one of them is going to hear your message and not every one of them is going to see what it is that you're doing. So how then can you also tap into this audience? How can you tap into this traffic? How can you actually bring that traffic off of social media platforms and put them into either your website, your landing pages or whatever offers you have going on at the moment? That is everyone's dilemma right now. If it wasn't, there would be a lot of millionaires. If it wasn't, there would be a lot of rich guys out there. So that's the reason why we're going to sit here for the next 30 minutes just to discuss what sort of ways and tricks are actually working at the moment to bring traffic from social media and bring them across to our websites or to whatever we've created. Sandy Walker, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you've been having a fantastic week so far. All right, so I was just really saying, there's over 2 billion people that are um, either checking in on Facebook these days, and there's also a dozen other social media platforms out there. How are people going to know which social media platform to concentrate on? How are people going to know what to do on those particular social media platforms? And how are people going to actually know um, how to then convert that traffic from social media when they come onto their website? So I hope these 16 tips are going to be helping you. And if you've got any questions, please type them in as we go along. And... Um, one other thing, if you're not using social media in 2017 right now to actually market your website, market your services, market your or grow your brand, then you're losing a lot of highly targeted traffic. 
You're missing out on a lot of traffic and thereby your ability to actually make bigger profits and make a difference in your life, make a difference in the lives of those people that need to hear your message. All right. So that being said, how do you actually then strategize your social media outreach to actually really determine what traffic is going to convert to actually really determine how to communicate to that traffic and how to actually, um, you know, make sure that you're not just wasting time on Facebook as as of which a lot of people um, you know, seem to be doing lately, okay? I would show you one thing right now. There's only three things you've got to master about marketing. And these three things are your message, the market you're sending that message to, and the media you're using to reach out to that, uh, to that market, all right? So your message is your how-to, your message is your product, your message is, um, you know, your processes, everything else that goes along with what it is that you do, who you do it for, and why should people care, all right? Your message is your products, your message is what payoff do you give people if they have actually, um, you know, worked with you and they, you know, want to go ahead with your services. Your message is how do you solve people's pains? Your message is how do you actually help other people connect that are going through the same uh, problems that your services can fix? All right. Now, the market happens to be your avatar. The market happens to be that person on the other end of the spectrum who's going to be giving you money so that you can live the lifestyle that you want. All right. Those are the two things you should worry about. The media can always vary. The media can be a podcast. The media can be YouTube. The media can be a blog. The media can be Facebook or whatever social media. The media can be radio. The media can be TV. The media can be a cinema. Whichever way you use the vehicle you use to convey that message to a market. Now, as we know, the media can vary. The media can, can be anything and it's volatile. But as long as your message is concrete and it's going to a targeted audience or market, you will never go wrong. I'll give you a specific example. A hundred years ago, Coca-Cola was existing. All right. And what was their message? Their message was open happiness. All right. That has been their message for years and years and years. How were they passing on that message before, you know, I mean, before Facebook, before Instagram, before Snapchat, they were using blogs, they were using the radio, they were using banners and trucks and the way the, the Coca-Cola bottle is, um, is shaped. All right. So the media can change with the changing of times. The media can change with the way, um, you know, people are receptive to information, but how the people understand it how they understand your message and who that message is directed to will never change. So you really need to know, first of all, when you're on social media, are you actually reaching out to the right kind of people with the right kind of pain that need your kind of product? And once you know that, you would know definitely what to post. Do you know what I mean? It is no secret at all, do you know what I mean, that you need to come up with engaging content that is going to intrigue your followers and, you know, and the larger target audience so that they check out either your links or whatever information you're putting out there and they can be redirected to your website coming in from social media. The content can be anything from maybe an article or how to infograph an image or a video. But as long as there is a message in that content that is designed to reach a particular audience. But guess what other people do? They just spray and pray and hope people are going to, you know, like what they're talking about. If you look at my, my Facebook lately, I've just been, you know, on a one track mind and talking about deodorant for no apparent reason. You know what I mean? It's an experiment that I'm putting out there to see if, you know, if you combine things that are not related, but you're consistent about it and you consistently talk about it, you raise some sort of curiosity in an audience. So, so far, I can't report on what's happening, but I can see I haven't lost any, any fans. I can see a lot of people are now getting intrigued as to why am I continuously posting about deodorant? You know, so whatever you choose to share on your social media must be relevant to your audience. 
You should know your audience well enough to know that they're going to react like this if I share things like this. You should know them intimately enough. You know? For for instance, you know, a few teenagers would want to read, um, you know, you know, what can I say? A few teenagers would want to, to read a blog or watch a video or something like that. Professionals want to read a white paper or they only have time for a two-minute video. You know what I mean? So you need to know what, you know, how much time your audience actually does have. You know, you need to know how much time your audience is willing to pay attention to you. You need to know what formats they would actually prefer to consume your content. You need to know what kind of information they're actually looking for. And then you develop your content accordingly. Because once you now know that your content should be able to engage them, your content should be able to educate them, your content should be able to, um, you know, inspire them to want more. Do you know what I mean? And your, your content should be able to provide value because you are paid in direct proportion to the value you actually bring into the marketplace. So if you're not putting out value there, there's no way people are going to follow you on social media. If you are not educating the people, how are people going to know how good your service is and what it is that you actually offer? You know what I mean? So some people are just... Throwing and throwing and throwing content on, on social media there. But how is it organized in, in, in a way that it's, it's inspiring, it's educational, or it's intriguing, or it's so remarkable that people want to share it? Is it really going to the right kind of ears that need to hear it at that particular moment? And some people forget what medium they are using to communicate with people. Social media has become so much of an integral part of our livelihood that you can't mess around on social media anymore. You can't goof around if you're not backing yourself up. So you need to know what place you are in, what sort of mood your audience is normally in, and how you project yourself. Are they ready for you to be a clown? Are they ready for you to be serious? Are they ready for you to be whichever way? So you got to really, really, really zero in on how are you presenting yourself on social media? Because if you chop and change, and if you're not backing it up with, with proven methods or proven ideologies, you will soon lose your customers. And Tuff says, targeted content should be important at its core and interestingly dressed up in its aesthetics. Absolutely. Because people are coming to the internet to, to, to get information. Now, if your brand is the one that's providing that information, they get to know you, like you, and trust you. All right? So that you now become the curator of the information. They don't have to go out there searching for that information online. They just come to that one particular place, and you are the person providing that content. And Sandy, I love the points you're making. Thank you so much right there. So when you know what medium you're going to be using, because if your target audience are professionals, you are not going to be found on a, a platform like Musical.ly. Do you know what I mean? So find what is the most effective traffic source in, in, in social media and just focus on that. All right? Before, Twitter used to allow you to, to tweet in 140 words. Now they have doubled that. Media is constantly evolving to accommodate the people. So whether you are tweeting in 140 or you're tweeting in 280, as long as your message is reaching a market, you're safe. G'day, Steven Sidon. How are you going, my friend? You know, there's also places like Pinterest. People get really confused as to which social media should I, should I choose or which social media should I go for? You know? There's places like Pinterest. It's one of the biggest sources of traffic that you can have for your website because people can pin your, your pictures and then, you know, when people are searching for decorations or whatever it is, depending on what audience you are trying to reach out for. So if you can combine your YouTube, your Google, your, your, your LinkedIn, and it's still not enough to surpass the traffic that some, um, you know, some websites or some social media bring. Find out where your tribe is and vibe with them. 
So where you focus on should be where your ideal client resides. You know? And once you're there, make sure that your content is interactive because it weighs, it, 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 it works better than one-way communication. Gone are the days where you can just say things and people are expected to understand and acknowledge it. People want to touch the hem. People want to continue, um, you know, relationships with those that they're going to be purchasing from. You know, people want to, to be in touch with where they're sending their money to. So if you're creating polls, if you're creating quizzes, surveys, contests, or some kind of Q&A, and inviting people to some sort of open discussion on your platform, they will also invite most of their friends because they're being heard. But most of us just, most of us just put out a, a status. And then they think, oh, just because I've built it, they're going to come. It doesn't work like that anymore. Because social media now works best when it's a two-way communication and it's in real time. You know, people want, you know, to be in touch with the people that they're getting the information from. Twitter has made it possible by giving you Periscope. You can do a live video on there. Facebook has also been ph phenomenally, um, you know, popular because of this reason. Right now, you can speak to, to me, you know, directly and I can answer you back. Are you doing that for your clientele or for your target audience? You know? So for you to do that, you want to focus on content that initiates discussions. If people are not talking about you in the business world, you are good as dead. You want people to be talking about you. So you want to be creating content that encourages or actually invites comments. Why do you think Kim Kardashian is so popular? Because she brings in controversy. You know? When people have something to say, they will, you always score better. You know why? Because you're then being introduced to, to wider audiences. And especially if your content is informative, is positive enough, you will be shared around by people. So the purpose, the purpose is not just to share, you know, just normal, ordinary, helpful information, but it's to get the reader to check your website, is to get the reader to be intrigued enough to want to know more about you. Only that would then generate traffic for you. Because if you just, um, you know, repurpose whatever other people are saying on the internet, you're not going to be any different. You would just be a one-click wonder. So you want to make sure you are pointing out your own point of difference. Carve out your own niche. Talk about something that only you can talk about and it makes sense to the people that come to your website or to your, to your social media. You know? And once you have people watching and listening to you, make sure you've got testimonials to actually prove that you've got the goods and you know what you're talking about. Because we are social beings, you know what I mean? And we want to go to where other people have been. We like gatherings. So yes, definitely to encourage people to visit your website. Um, you know, if they've watched maybe a full video of you, find out where you can also get positive remarks and feedback about your service. You see? It's, it's, it's just essential. People want to see if you're the right kind of person who can, um, you know, solve their problems. And when people see and witness a good thing happening, you know, because, because of what you've done for other people, they want to be a part of that. And you definitely be gathering enough traffic coming in from social media. And from then on, when they are on your website, you then figure out a way to collect their email address. And once you have their email address, you can then continue, you know, working with them. Because if people are only on social media, if people are only on Facebook, you don't own that audience, all right? That is borrowed audience. You don't own that audience. And Stephen says people prefer to work on recommendations. Absolutely. You can go on and on and say, hey, look at me. This is what I can do, etc., etc." But, you know, people would always want to look you up. So make it easy by showing that you can actually help them 
First of all, maybe by actually helping them. All right? And once you do that, show that enough people can actually trust you, enough people can actually want to work with you, and it makes it a whole lot easy. You know? And uh, Tuff says, shareability of content is a factor of the social currency derived from that content. How does this make me look cool with my mates? Absolutely. You want to create content that is good enough so that when people are sharing, it makes them look good. As human beings, we always want to be seen as positive. We always want to be seen as helpful. We always want to be seen as people of value, of stature, or of some sort of status. So if your content is good enough and it makes other people feel, you know, noticed and it gives them, yes, social currency and credibility, they will share it, not because they have to, but because they want to. And guess what happens? It then opens up a whole Pandora's box and you are introduced to their audiences. Good day, Robert. How's it going? Thanks for tuning in, my man. All right. So the way you do that is usually... Um, maybe interview people and ask them what are the good points and what amazing experiences are you offering so that other people can actually get to understand what your, your service um, you know, does. Scott Woodrow says, quality is common word I'm hearing today. Quality is a common word I'm hearing today. Obviously, everybody likes quality, you know? Great, so now that you know what to post, you should also know when and where to post it. These days, people are always on social media. People are constantly watching their phones. So if you're not posting at least twice or three times a day, you get lost in the news feed. It depends on, you know, how good you are. It depends on how, you know, um, relevant, yes, how relevant the content is. But there are specific times when people of specific profiles actually come online to check their timelines. So depending on where you are, figure out what sort of time do people, uh, you know, frequent Facebook or whatever social media you're working on. But the best bet is everybody, if you're like me, you wake up, maybe you drink water and then you're already on your emails or you're already on social media. Which is what I think at least 250 people out there are doing too. All right. So you want to make sure that you know your target audience well enough to know what sort of time they are, you know, um, you know, going to be able to be online. Sometimes professionals will check their posts um, from other businesses and they follow, you know, after their first meeting in the morning or after their first tea break. So you want to make sure you know all of that about your customers, which brings us back to that point that I said, know your customer and what it is that actually makes them tick. If your target audience is housewives, you know, they're maybe constantly online or they're rarely online because they're cooking breakfast, lunch and dinner, or they're doing chores and taking kids uh, to school and they're driving behind the wheel. Know when your target audience is on. So I can't really say there's a time where you can, you know, post or whatever it is. If you know your target audience well enough, you would know what they're particularly doing at, at different times of the day. All right. So, you know, likewise, every sort of social media platform has its own periods of peak and off peak, et cetera, et cetera. You should also know if you know, um, you know, your, your audience that well. So find out what your target audience is, is. Is, is, is active mainly on and share your most important content with your target audience when they're online so that you get maximum reach. All right. And I really want to tell you something, guys. Not everyone is seeing your content. Not everyone is seeing your content. Most of them are sitting here watching my video right now. So if you're posting, they are not seeing your stuff. So don't be afraid to regurgitate or repurpose or repost your content. If you notice that people haven't really seen this piece of content and you think it's relevant quality, you are allowed to repost it. All right? And don't even be afraid to do so. Okay? So you can repost your content at the best possible time. And after, you know, you see where, where there's a lot of traction, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, if a post did really, really well in, in March or in February last year, you could always bring it back again. 
Facebook has a way of of making you repost your old content from um, you know from last year or something like that. You don't have to continuously scratch your head and and, and, and recreate stuff. You could always repost stuff that you you um, you know you've put out before. But make sure whatever you're doing, you are curating and orchestrating an audience. Because your message is going to fall on deaf ears if people don't know who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. So you must be able to be an influencer, and you should choose around you some sort of influencers that will help you move your message. Alright? You want to associate with people that are also in the same niche as you? All right, those people would then be able to, to move your message to other audiences that you cannot uh, move yourself. You can also have people that are already in your industry to actually endorse your posts, to actually share your content. All right, so you can be having other people doing that on your behalf so you can gain traffic from their audiences, um, you know, that you won't be able to reach all by yourself. All right. Some, I think some people um, have caught on to this whole influencer thing. They want to offer an endorsement for a fee. Well, pick, pick your battles. You could also try that route. I mean, it's, it depends. If, if the audience they are reaching out to is your target audience, why not? You're already paying for Facebook ads anyway, you know what I mean? Or you can just go with the organic endorsements. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. And in due time, your social media presence must, you know, start commanding some sort of um, influence on its own. You know what I mean? And you can start becoming a thought leader. Because people follow trends. People follow those that are heading somewhere. So make sure that you, when, you, when, you, when you're reaching out to those people, you are literally telling people what you do, how you can help them, etc., etc. And this is where you do it using social media bios. Um, Tav says, good to see here, gracious. Oh, thank you so much. And one other thing, be open and free to give your content out for free, man. How are people going to know you can help them if you're not actually helping them? And how are people going to know what you know if you're not putting out content out there? All right? So make sure whatever you're doing, um, you, you, you're just really out there. Because we're here to live, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute. So if you're not contributing to, to greater humanity, how is the universe going to give you back your efforts or whatever monetary value you're, you're searching out for out there? All right? Be sure to be helpful. Be sure to be, um, you know, useful in the market. Don't just be a one-click wonder. Don't just... Don't just go in there and, and take, take, take without you giving out there as well. You know what I mean? Because the more you give, you are actually working on your credibility for your brand. Because if you know something and you're giving it away for free, imagine what you would know behind the scenes and that you can charge for. You know? So your social media presence is, 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 is usually making you more trustworthy. Because if you're out there just spamming, if you're out there just sharing poor quality content uh, just so that you can generate interest, you know, you, you, you end up annoying people and people just um, unfollow you. And then what's, what's the whole point? If you become a trusted brand, because like I said earlier on, people are coming to the internet to get information. And if you're the person providing that information, they get to know you. People get to know you, like you, and trust you. You know, while others are, are finding it hard to get, you know, a following, just give out people. You know, show your human side. Sometimes you can just put out humor in your content. People are, are too serious out there and they are not doing enough to reach out to the people that are actually going to be paying them to have the lifestyles that they want. You know? Throw out humor. Right now I'm having a ball talking about deodorant for no apparent reason. You know? You know, it's time to think of something that is definitely unique and can definitely trend your campaign in a humorous way. You know? People are usually, you know, people usually look more into things that they find humorous or funny than things that are very 
um, informational. You know? So, you know, if people are tired of all these hashtags or whatever trending topics. You can just create a meme or you can create a funny video that will just incite humor in people, you know? And, you know, Robert is talking about how his underarms smell like Earl Grey tea. <laughs> you know? You should just try and use humor in a sophisticated way, you know, where you... You don't involve names, you don't hurt other people, you don't jeopardize other people. You actually earn respect by earning laughs and increasing your traffic drastically. But people don't understand that aspect, you know? So at the end of the day, just figure out where you are, who your clients are, and how you're actually reaching out to them. Mix and match, be yourself, be authentic. People are tired of one-click wonders. All right? So, you know, finally, before I jump off, just combine your social media marketing with, you know, the, the email marketing, SEO, search engine optimization, um, you know, pay-per-click advertising, and other outreach programs for, up, uh, you know, for your optimum impact. Don't just rely on social media. You know? Oftentimes, the first communication doesn't, you know, generate the traffic or, or any traction. But the second point, the third point, because people are too busy. They can't just see your stuff and automatically convert. All right? So try and, and, and be as dynamic as you can. Be yourself as much as you can and utilize social media for what it is. It is social. Stop, you know, trying to emulate other people that are fast going nowhere. A lot of people are not making money online. So you could just be copying them and they're not doing much. All right? So at the end of the day, figure out, fight your own battles, know your own clientele, know what they want and just try and source them out there. You know? So at the end of the day, I really hope that, um, you know, these tics, uh, tips that I've just given you would help you to start generating targeted audiences from your social media. It's not just about Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. It's a means to communicate and reach out to your target audience. Use it like that. And above all, be absolutely nice to people. All right? If you're nice to people, they'll be nice back. But if you're not being a nice human, don't expect to make it online. In the meantime, thank you so much for being nice to me, being nice enough to share this um, show today. I really, 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 absolutely, um, you know, um, admire your tenacity. And Taf says, diffuse your deodorant. <laughs> we'll do that. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. I've got calls lined up. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys.